Vicarage in the Mirror, a detective novel by my favorite author, Lady Clarissa Westmacott. For years now, I've been trying to convince my theater group to stage one of her plays. We Swiss are crazy about trains. We don't just have a lot of railroads. We have the most beautiful ones in the world. so kind as to close the door. I don't want to sit in the drive. Oh, pardon me. Very kind of you. Thanks. Oh, oh, pardon me. No, no, no problem. The uniform is waterproof. Uh, Mr. Lucio. Professor Edgar Lucio. Oh, a professor. Are you a scientist? Do you teach at the Sorbonne? No, I work at the British Museum in London. You don't say. So, you were, shall we say, an eyewitness to the burglary two days ago? No, I wouldn't say that. Oh, no? Well, there was a lot of commotion, but I didn't really pay much attention to it. There was a break-in in your museum, and it didn't concern you? Well, let's just say that nothing that's happened in the last 2,000 years concerns me. <laughs> Whatever you say. The famous Inspector Legrand is on this train. I imagine you know him. Uh, no. Should I? You don't know him? And you also don't know what he's doing here? No. <laughs> Why should I? Just a thought. You're a representative of the British Museum. There's a guarded safe on the train. I'm sorry. I don't know what you're trying to imply. And now, please excuse me. May I ask where you are going? Of course. To Venice. I'm going to meet some colleagues there. Oh, Venice. A beautiful city, or so I'm told. Indeed. But I really have to take my leave now. Just one more thing. Did you notice anything unusual on the train? Here? On the train? No. I can't say that I have. Although I did spend most of the time in my compartment. I don't want to take up any more of your valuable time. But you do understand, don't you, that what concerns me is the present. And especially the robbery at the museum. Yeah, of course, of course. It's just... I'm in rather a hurry. You'll get in touch if you notice anything unusual, won't you, Professor? Of course, Constable. What's this? What's the matter, sir? The door. I can't open it. Ah. We'll sort it out somehow. The compartment is locked. But I didn't lock it. I don't even have a key. I asked the steward. He was going to bring me one, but he never came back. Someone locked it. Find the steward. He needs to bring me the key immediately. Calm down, Professor. I'll see what I can do. You don't understand. I have to get back in my compartment. All right. Just wait here. The little label on the door reads Baroness von Trevitz. Blue blood on the Orient Express. Yes, what is it? Whoever that is, James, ask them whether they found my purse and then close the door. The noise on this train is driving me crazy. You're missing a purse. Was it stolen? At the very least, I cannot find it, sir. It was stolen! When did you... When was the last time the Baroness saw her purse? What? In Zurich, on the platform, sir. I just asked where you last saw your purse. In Zurich, on the platform! James, tell him that I still had it when I got out to stretch my legs. The Baroness says... Maybe you lost it there. 
What? The Baroness never loses anything, sir. I never lose anything! Very well, then. I shall be on the lookout for your purse. I... I will have a look around. Thank you, sir. I don't believe it. I never thought I'd ever meet you. Uh, pardon me, but uh, we'd prefer... It's all right, Miss Miller. I'd like to speak to the inspector. Unfortunately, just a constable, Lady Westmacott. I'm reading The Vicarage in the Mirror right now, for the fifth time at least. That's nice, Constable... Uh, Zellner. Anton Jakob Zellner. This is my companion, Miss Miller. A pleasure. May I ask what you're doing here? Are you on holiday? Holiday? Yes, so to speak. The first and last holiday of my life. Madam? I've been writing since I was a little girl. It became my job, and now I've stopped. So, this must be a holiday. You quit writing? Impossible. I have all of your books. Your Detective Partou is my favorite character. Then I have bad news for you. I killed the old wretch off years ago. I... I don't understand. I'd rather not discuss my work, Constable. Oh, well, fine. Are you traveling to Istanbul, Lady Westmacott? No. We are on our way to Venice. From there, we will take a ship to Cairo. As you may know, I have a penchant for archaeology. I fund a few excavations in Egypt. I travel to Egypt by ship as a young woman. And now I'm doing it again as an old woman. I see. As a writer, you must be very observant. Am I right? I mean, you have to study the behavior of people around you to create the characters in your novels, don't you? I solved the mystery of human nature a long time ago, Mr. Zellner. Since then, most people just bore me. Really? I had the impression you were eyeing me suspiciously as I came in. What do you want to know, Constable? Did you notice the man who just walked into the next carriage with a cup of tea? I did. He seemed nervous. He was waiting at the bar for the steward, and since the steward never appeared, he elected to help himself. He took two biscuits. He seems pretty young, but he's already a professor at the British Museum. Interesting. I'll have to talk to him later. Uh, just out of courtesy, of course. Of course. There's something else. A passenger's purse has gone missing. I suppose you haven't seen it. I'm sorry, Constable Zellner. As you know, I only deal with murder, not burglary. Have you asked my boy yet? Maddie is good at finding things. I'll go and do that now. As much as I like to keep talking, duty calls. You were right. Madam? I did observe you as you came in. You seemed so... Uh, eager. I... It's been a long time since I've had a chance to prove myself, madam. And this is it. Your chance. I do hope so. Then grab it. Even small people can make big changes, as my friend Ronald likes to say. I shall do my best. The steward must have forgotten the toothpicks. Normally, he would offer them discreetly after dinner. Mmm, butterscotch. I've loved them since I was a child. Their only drawback, they don't play nice with false teeth. Mmm, maybe if I just suck it.
I suppose the steward won't object to me having a look around in his absence. The pad on which the steward writes orders, empty. Maybe he didn't use it because there's not much to do today. I don't need the pad, but the pencil might come in handy. A shortwave radio. It's amazing how small these things have become in the last 10 years. The steward probably uses the scissors on hard to open packages. These days nearly everything is sealed up tight. A colleague recently told me about dry powdered soup in small bags. I couldn't believe it. When I scratch the pencil's lead with the scissors, I get fine graphite powder. I won't get a Nobel Prize for the idea, but graphite powder will bring out fingerprints at a pinch. Zelda. Right, right. How can I help you? Tell me, did you notice anything suspicious here on the train or in Zurich? You mean, except for the fact that my suitcase was stolen on the platform? No. Is there any reason to be concerned? No, just routine. Constable Zellner, please don't think I'm naive. I spotted the inspector from Interpol. Legarde is his name, if I recall correctly. Le Grand. If you say so. At the train station in Zurich, he put a cash box into the safe, and then kept close watch as it was loaded onto the train. Don't tell me that a man at his pay grade routinely tramps across the Alps just to keep an eye on cash boxes. A cash box? Like the ones you'd find in safe deposit boxes? Precisely. And I believe we both have a good idea just what's inside. Any news about the robbery in London? Quite something, wasn't it? It must have been professionals. The way they disabled one of the best security systems in the world. Most impressive. People were injured. Well, one cannot execute a robbery of that scale without no, collateral damage. It seems like the Raven has finally found a worthy successor. We can look forward to new and spectacular coups. I'm afraid I won't enjoy his exploits this time around if the new Raven is so reckless. That's your prerogative. I meant to ask, the Baroness is missing her purse. A Baroness? This train is really full of the creme de la creme. The queen of crime is over there, and now a Baroness as well. Have you seen the purse? Unfortunately, no. Do you know Lady West Macott? You were talking to her. Well, I'm an admirer of her work. Like so many others. I once read in the newspaper that only Shakespeare and the Bible sell more copies than her crime novels. I read that too. She must be filthy rich. As a doctor, I'd have to work a thousand years to earn that kind of money. The cash box in the safe. What do you think it contains? A ruby was stolen in London. One of the legendary Eyes of the Sphinx. The second jewel, an emerald, is rumored to be in a Swiss bank vault, if I remember correctly. Both jewels were supposed to be exhibited together in Cairo for the first time in 50 years. It does make one wonder. Indeed. Your newspaper caught my eye. May I borrow it for a second? You can take the section with the article on the burglary. You're interested in that bit. 
Aren't you? <laughs> you caught me out. Here you go. Dankeschön. There's something else. Do you know where the conductor is? Hmm. I'd like to know that myself. I told him to search for my missing suitcase in Zurich. He hasn't got back to me yet. He's probably in cahoots with the thieves. And didn't bother getting back on the train. If we don't crack down on vermin like them, the rabble will rule the world one day. Well, at the moment, we still don't know what really happened. He is not here doing his job. That's bad enough. Auf Wiedersehen, Dr. Gebhardt. Goodbye, Constable. It was a pleasant chat, really. The ladder leads up to the roof. It will be suicidal to climb up there while the train is at full speed. The wind, the tunnels... No, I'll stay down here. I strongly suspect that the door is locked. No, it's open. Hello? Wow, don't move a muscle, you feathered fiend. Put the gun down, Robert. If I may introduce... Constable Robert Oliver from the Yard. This is the revered Constable Zellner of the Swiss police, who obviously couldn't control his curiosity. Then I was right. You really do want to lure someone into a trap. That's none of your business. Perhaps that someone recently struck in London. And how would I bait my trap then? With an eye? An eye on its way from Zurich to Cairo? <laughs> someone has done his homework. Well done, Constable. I hope you'll acknowledge that I, as a Swiss policeman, can undertake investigations in my own country. Are we still in Switzerland? I could be your eyes on the train, as long as you're here in the freight car. Oh, really? There is a certain Professor Lucien on the train. He's an archaeologist from London. And what's his story? Well, it seems someone locked him out of his compartment. Locked him out? Well, yes. The door is locked and he's standing outside without a key. Was it locked from inside? It may have been. Hmm. Do you think the locked door could be important? Professor Lucien plays an important role in this story. Well then, Constable Zellner, be my eyes and ears on the train and see that Professor Lucien gets back into his compartment. Report back to me when you're through. My pleasure, monsieur. And then there's the Baroness. She's missing her purse. Baroness von Trebitz? Interesting. Indeed, sir. But it has nothing to do with our case. So I shouldn't concern myself with the matter. Ah, uh, why not? It's your job as a policeman. But don't expect me to be particularly interested in a lost purse. What do you know of this raven's heir? He tried to blow me up. Rob, we don't know who we're dealing with yet. In any event, the new raven is a more dangerous man than the old one. How do you know it's a man? It could just as easily be a woman. Or several men. And anyway, how do you know that it's a new raven? Monsieur? Never mind. I go attend to the door now. Good. And Constable Zellner? Yes? Don't bother us unless you have something new to report. Of course. A thief might get anxious if there's too much activity in the freight car. Exactement. Knock twice. Then we'll know that it's you. Understood. An investigation on behalf of the Grand that takes me one step closer. If I can convince him of my competence, I might even be able to see this case through to the end. 
A box with a padlock. I suppose it contains tools for the train's crew, maybe for coupling and uncoupling the cars. At any rate, it's positioned so that it's easier to reach from the ground than from up here. Locked. Bang! Bang! Uh -huh. Don't move! Matt, have you gone mad? I'll shoot! Hey, my pistol! You'll get it back in Venice. I could have fallen under the wheels. I thought you were a ghost. Ghosts don't exist. They do too. One just flew past the window. Yes, yes, sure. Now get moving. Oh, man. Yes, ma'am. Uh, my son didn't make any trouble for you, I hope. It's just that he just walked past us, silent and seething. That's usually a sign that someone's laid down the law. I'm afraid so. He played a trick on me, a rather dangerous one. The lad left me no choice but to take away his wooden pistol as a punishment. I understand. And thank you. Maddie is a very lively child. Sometimes he needs a strong, fatherly hand. Where is Matt's father, if I may ask? He's... He's gone. Ah. I understand. Could you, uh, leave Maddie's pistol here, perhaps? So you don't have to bother with it? Of course. I told him he wouldn't get it back until Venice. Very well. Thank you again, Constable. for the rest of the trip? Until I get my pistol back. I gave it to your mother. Oh, man. Couldn't you have just raked me over the coals? Would you have learned anything from that? I didn't learn anything from this, either. Would you like a butterscotch? You think you can bribe me? I have no reason to. You made trouble and got punished for it. Take it as a peace offering. Just four? If I'm faster than you, there'll only be three. Hey! Friends again? Mm-hmm. All right, then. And no dangerous nonsense anymore. Okay. Your mother is Lady Westmacott's companion, correct? Yeah, but it's not like you think. At first I thought, boy, you must be really wicked if you need to pay for friends. But the lady's really okay. A bit odd and really old. But other than that, she's great. She likes me. The lady has peculiar taste. Hey! You and your mother, do you both live on Lady Westmacott's estate? I'm only there for the holidays. Most of the time I'm at boarding school. I imagine that's not very pleasant. No, it's fine. I have friends there. You always have to be so quiet in the lady's house. And I'm not allowed to bring any friends. Such a big house with so many places to hide. And no one to play hide and seek with. You said it. The Baroness in the second compartment over there is missing her purse. Do you have any idea where it could be? <laughs> Do I ever? Hmm? That guy over there with the violin case? What about him? He picked up something in Zurich and 
put it in his violin case. Really? Yeah, and he made sure that nobody saw him. But you saw him? Uh-huh. Did you also see what it was? Nah, not really. But now that I think of it, it must have been the Baroness's purse. I should look into it, shouldn't I? I think so. Tell me, have you seen the steward anywhere? Hmm, no. He was walking around a little while ago, though. Hopefully they didn't forget him in Zurich. <laughs> What's he supposed to do? I'm looking for a key to open a compartment door. Did you check his things behind the counter? I'm sure the drawers will be locked. Can't you break it open or pick the lock like the raven? Perhaps, but I'd need a piece of wire or something like that. Ask my mom. She has a lot of hairpins. She doesn't like the wind messing up her hair. Mm. Thanks for the tip. How old are you, Matt? In eight months, I'll be nine years old. And do you already know what you want to be when you grow up? A burglar? <laughs> no. We'll see. Maybe an actor. Really? Well, I don't know. You need a lot of talent for that. I'm an actor in a theater group, you know? You are? Oh, yes. And I'm one of the best in our group, if I may say so. I get really deep into my roles, you know? I don't just talk like the character. I think like him. I become him. It's the only way to... <coughs> Matt, are you okay? <coughs> I think you just have to be good at copying things to be an actor. That... that wasn't bad. Disturbing, but not bad. So long. So longer. The violin case looks pretty old, but that doesn't say anything about the quality of the violin. The best violins are often in the oldest cases. Excuse me, sir. A passenger is missing her purse. Perhaps it was stolen. Really? Someone saw you with your violin case on the platform in Zurich. What's the meaning of this? I didn't steal anything. Nobody said you did. I just wanted to ask you whether you might have noticed anything on the platform. Ah, well... Why did you think I was accusing you? Well, I thought... Uh, because you mentioned my violin case in the context of the purse. Apropos, may I have a look at your violin? It must be a very extraordinary piece. Oh, that's, uh, that's not possible. It's a genuine Guarneri. Very valuable. Very, and also very sensitive. What could harm it here? Light? Air? May I ask you to open the violin case? No, you may not. I'm not guilty of anything. I'm afraid I have to insist. Then I'm afraid you need a warrant. I will not stand back and let you rifle through my belongings. Mrs. Miller made a good impression. She wanted to protect Lady Westmacott from me, a pushy admirer. Very diligent, but she does seem a little nervous and tense. I imagine she has her work cut out for her with Matt, and a difficult bus from what they say. Mrs. Miller? Yes? Uh, please excuse my unusual request, but Matt said you have some hairpins. Could I borrow one? One of my hairpins? It's a long story. It would be a big help. Well, if you really need one. Go ahead, Mary. The constable won't do it any harm. Will you, Mr. Zelda? Of course not, madam. Is this one okay? It'll do nicely, madam. How very kind of you. Goodbye, Mrs. Miller. Goodbye, Constable. An 
and suddenly, it's me who's the thief on the train. Oops, that was easier than expected. Hmm, batteries, a toothbrush, a shaving brush, but not the key to the compartment door. Just this one. Hmm, too small for the door, but it might still be useful. is secured with a padlock. I won't be able to open it without a key. That's it. There we go. This should help. I have everything I need. You can easily lock the compartment door from inside by turning a little knob. But I didn't lock it. Professor, if you had locked the door from in there, you wouldn't be out here. Uh, that's true. I don't believe that... It's no use. The bolt is too short to get a good grip on it. I bet I could really get a grip on the bolt with these. Well, come on then, hurry up. Hello? I barely left the window ajar. Nothing to see. Ah. Are you okay? Hmm? Yes. Fine. Do you have any idea why the door was locked? I don't know. Uh, maybe the constant vibrations caused the lock to lock itself. You can't possibly believe that. Well, then what's your theory? The conductor could have locked it from the outside. On the other hand, it could have been someone here in the compartment who locked the door from the inside. Who? And where have they gone? They could have climbed out there. Who would be that insane? You tell me, Professor. So, what are you hiding in your bag? What do you have that would be worth stealing? No, nothing. No valuables? Certainly not. <laughs> Not on my salary. It was enough for a first-class compartment on a luxury train. That's my business. You're playing a dangerous game, Professor Lucien. I'd like to look around a bit. Of course. I really wonder what the professor is hiding from me. But I can't just rifle through the luggage of innocent citizens. This is the 60s. Very nice fountain pen. Pricey. If you'd managed to decode hieroglyphics that boggled the best minds of the last 3,000 years, you'd have received a gift like that as well. Hmm. No. Nothing interesting. The Bible, Grimm's fairy tales, Moby Dick, 
and gin, whiskey and rum, all classics. But what's this? What do you have there? It's a button. From a suit or a uniform, I guess. The burglar might have lost it. Maybe, or maybe not. If I notice anyone with a missing button on his jacket, I'll ask him about it. But I wouldn't get my hopes up. If there was a burglar, he climbed out the window and jumped off the train. Hmm. Assuming there really was someone in the compartment, and he climbed out the window, where's he gone? Goodbye, Professor. Goodbye.